Today, in part one of this two-part series, we'll work alongside Dave as he begins the pre-season service on his 1961 BSA Rocket Gold Star. The bike hasn't been run since last season, and there's a number of areas of concern that need to be addressed before it's ready to ride. In part two of this series, we'll be putting the bike back together and taking it out for a ride to see how she goes. Let's get started. Today, uh, my bike, um, 1961 RGS Rocky Gold Star. It's really what you would do to bring the bike back into riding after the winter, so after hibernation. There's a couple of things on here I want to do, and if I don't do this now, it won't happen. Like the rocker box gaskets want replacing. Those gaskets have all sort of moved out, need replacing. So today we'll take the tank off, take the rocker box covers off, rocker box off. But just a, you know, insight to what we do, like, because we're obviously going to do the tappets on that once we put new gaskets in. Before I take the tank off, these brass taps, they have a tendency of leaking. They're good taps, that's what, you know, you'll always see on a BSA, normally an RGS or Gold Star. When they start dripping and the fuel starts running down the fuel pipe and dripping onto the cases, it's where the taper is not actually seating properly and that's where the fuel runs around. So if you slap that in, you can usually stop that from doing what this one's been doing, dripping. Start off with, uh, I've taken the seat off already because I'm charging my battery up, but we'll take the tank off and we go from there. This is what I'm meaning about these gaskets, these rocker box gaskets. With the heat, and if you have put these on with a bit of silicone, which I don't do anymore, they can move. And this has moved out and you can see it doesn't look very good and you can see where it's starting to leak a little bit of oil. So yeah, and if you start squeezing down on your bolts underneath pulling these up, it just spreads that gasket out even more. So I have to remove the rocker feed, head steady, We'll take the two covers off first, then we'll take the plugs out. We'll remove the four bolts that come down and the rear ones, and we can take the whole assembly away. You have a fibre washer on both of these rockers. You find these would tighten up okay, but sometimes you can put a doughty washer in there as well if you'll find that you can't seal these up. Good old doughty washer, but these ones are okay. So the saddle of the tank, we tend to put extra rubber on, uh, which is not a bad idea because a lot of these tanks, they rely so much on these pads on the front, these ones here, and some of the aftermarket tanks, they don't fit particularly tight there. So if you've got a bit more paddling, a padding in the saddle in the underside of the tank to keep it more rigid. So we have a little bit of extra padding is a good idea. It stops the vibration getting through to the tank. I think most people do that anyway. That actually is a replacement Indian tank, which are good. They're good quality and they're not all rusted out like the old ones would be. And what you find sometimes with rocker boxes like on this, we're getting hot and getting cool again and getting hot, that you'll find that these gaskets will slacken off a little bit. And if you use that silicone, that's when they start to move. Because these, these bolts on the back here, they've slackened off quite a lot actually. And you can see here, there is quite a lot of oil around. People probably realise that I tend to line things up. I tend to always put things back in formation to where I've taken them apart. As you can see, these are the rear ones, those are the front ones. And then it's going to go back in the right place. I always tend to do that on the bench, lay things out on the bench, or pre-assemble things once it's taken apart. I know we should all wear gloves really now, but you can't work so easily with gloves on. You don't have the feel for it. You know, if you're trying to undo a, a, a bolt or a nut, when you've got your skin to that, you can feel it better. It's like undoing that, you know, it's not easier doing it without having a glove on. And you tend not to drop things so easily when you have a little glove on either. So yeah, it's, it's something that, okay, you should really get your hands covered and be careful, you know, oil and grease, but, Fiddly little bits I tend to do without a glove. When you come to lifting up the rocker box, obviously it depends on which spring's under compression. Obviously it's got the valve open. 
you want to really undo the bolts a little bit evenly so it's not all loaded on one corner so those four or these two rear ones they come up evenly if you're doing it down on one side and up on the other really because a bit of stress on that rocker box but yeah that's really just, just a, a point that's worth remembering really once it's lifted away like it is now you could uh, you could slacken off the tappet adjustment but we're going to put new gaskets on here and it's quite handy having that almost hopefully where the clearance needs to be for when we come to adjust it again rather than slacking it right off now sometimes you just have to turn the engine over because there might be a push up in the air it's just to clear it so it's like this one at the moment I could really do a lifting off this side. I don't think I'm going to get quite the clearance. So I can just leave it there. Just going to whip the plugs out so I can turn the engine over more easily. That's the offending one just there. Is where the A10 is not as easy as the Triumph. It's just that there's not, not very much room between the top of the frame and if we have a push rod that's up it just restricts you when you're just moving it over. It gets caught on in between the, uh, the two rockers on part of the main assembly here. Yeah this is why I don't use silicone is because this will happen. They slide about, they start to break down they will part and they stick out the side. It will slacken off the adjustment and you'll get a bit of an oil leak and you'll pull that, that stud up and you'll then have to re-tap, readjust your tappet clearance. And the gasket really is moved and it's breaking out down, it's gone thin. See, this really is quite a mess here. So yeah, this is where you want to use well seal because they're really not good at all. And this is good quality gasket as well originally but it's absolutely useless now. A lot of old British stuff, we don't have an air filter. Uh, we just have literally a manifold on the end of the carb. But this one has got a gauze on, but a lot of the old stuff on the Gold Star, there is no air filter, it's straight in. And all of us who ride old bikes, you're always very wary about resurfaced roads, where it's dusty or stones. You don't want to ride on a road that's like that. I suppose it was in the day, any filter, any paper filter, wasn't really around then so much and it can cause a bit of a restriction they wanted these engines to breathe as so they wanted the air to be sucked in through that carb and as you know with a paper filter it can get clogged up a little bit it's doing its job but these old bikes didn't have it and you sometimes find on a slide that the scoring is caused by debris being pulled in a little bit that can happen but yeah always be a bit careful with filters if they've got one keep it on there if you're doing off-road stuff make sure it fits properly and it's serviced. Don't leave it contaminated because eventually it will give up the ghost or it will start sucking in that dirt in that filter. It will go into the engine. Yeah, all changes and filters are so important. They're a big factor of an engine's life, really. Right, I'm just going to take the fuel out of this tank. It was in here at the end of the last season, i say oh, probably October, November time. I will reuse it, but I wouldn't keep fuel too long six months really but you can still get four star um, fuel some garages still do it without the ethanol and i try and pick that up this is i think this is the last of this actually i think it's four star in here but the super i tend to use uh, fuel if i can't get that but as you know i, I tend to put a little bit of castor oil in mine that's why it looks a bit darker it gives it the smell and Castro is used in racing and you're not really supposed to put it in the oil because it, it will coagulate, it will uh, not like going with a, a modern type of oil, it starts to gunge up but a little bit in the tank it doesn't hurt and you'll get that burn smell, it smells that sweet smell and people ever been to Brands Hatch or anywhere years ago you, you just smelt that in the paddock and the bikes going around it it's an old familiar smell. And it's, it's, it's what we tend to do with these, these gold stars or rocket gold stars. It does give it a little bit of upper cylinder lubricant, really. Right, just gonna take the tap off. 
and then we'll take it apart and show you what you can do to reseat it. Because as I say, when they leak, they, they're not, you know, need to be replaced. They will be okay cleaned up. And it's not a bad idea to take your taps out occasionally and just check your filters. There's a bit of debris in there. So yeah, it's quite a good idea to do that once in a while and give that last bit of fuel a bit of a flush up, discard it. I think that's what we're going to do on this one. Okay, you're going to take this tap apart. Now, there's a series of washers in here. It's, it's not actually a spring. So we take the first, take the nut off first. There's your nut, the brass washer. Just a little bit of the thread here on this tap. It's just come away a little bit. Right, these, these bell ray washers, they're dished. And if you make sure that the two dishes go together, opposite, like a pair of bellows, and that's your spring tension. So two of those, and then we just take the back section here and take that out. The new tap can be assembled both ways. It can either on that side or that side. If you get it wrong, you can swap it over. It's not a problem. But here, you can see the taper. Now what happens is you get a little bit of scoring. And all we're relying on is to cut the fuel is, is when the hole is in line, that's your flow. And if you look up in there, you'll see it goes right through and you should be able to see daylight right through. And if you've got scoring running in here, it's the land fuel to flow around. So what we do, we give that a clean with paper, blow that out with an airline, then we lap that in with a bit of solvo. So I'll just put a little bit of solvo on my finger, or metal polish. We put that around there. The idea now is to put it back into the taper. It's just lap it, just to do this. Go around backwards and forwards. It should take out the scoring. What will happen is it will go in slightly further into the body. The tape will pull in a little bit more. It's always worth trying before you replace the tap. This, it might work for you. It'll certainly save you a bit of money if it does. I might take it out. You can see we've got Bit of polishing up on there. I think mean, what we do for the moment, just bring that back, that paste, that polish, and we'll put it back in. What's a good idea now is actually wash that out and just redo that, and that should work better. It might be a job to see it, but this is one we've cleaned up. This was quite scored. You can see that we have actually got rid of that scoring. This one we're just going to just give this a tidy up as well. Now, tighten this nut up. With brass, you've just got to be a bit careful. Don't over tighten it. Now, this is a little bit tight on the threads anyway, but we want to get it down to the washer and feel what the tap feels like to turn on because you want it to be stiff but not over stiff. We just blow that back out, the filter. Blow it from the inside out, don't blow it from the outside in. And that just screws into the top. We've blown all through there, so it should be nice and clear and they just screw down. And you obviously have your, your washer back on the top like that. So it's good to go. And we do the same with the other one. Right, we can put the taps back in now. Now these fiber washers, they get, an in, they get an imprint of the hexagon. So when you come to pull them up, try and make sure that sits in where it did before. Um, it does help a little bit and they should be okay. We'll put some fuel in the tank and we'll see whether it's leaking. Okay, both taps are closed and I think they're, they're nice and smooth to operate now. They shouldn't be over tight. You should be able to do that quite easily. We could probably put a bit more pressure on this one, just a tiny bit. It 
that's it. Now I'm just going to get it so it just cracks the fuel a little bit. I'm going to do the same with this one, just crack it. I'll shut that off. Wait for the drips to go. There shouldn't now be any fuel coming out those taps. That little trick does work, probably nine times out of ten. So don't give up on the tap thinking you've got to replace it. So this type of tap, I was prone to this. So when you've got the tap overhauled, you have this nice smooth motion with the tap. So when it starts to get notchy, very stiff, that's when you know it's starting to score up inside and you're getting it to leak and there's that tendency to try and tighten it up on the nut, over tighten it. But that notchiness is a scoring. When it's all nice and smooth, it should operate nice and easily. You shouldn't have any trouble turning that tap off. So when it gets stiff, take it apart, do what I've done, try that first before you replace it. Rocker box, now we've taken it off, we've cleaned it, and I've taken the studs out because where the gasket was moving around quite a bit, the surface area here wants a bit of a tidy up, and this is where we come in to use the block again. Spray the block, put your wet and dry on the top of it, and spray on the top again. It stops it moving about. We just want to take off these marks and make that nice and sharp and flat. You know, it's, it's got slightly rounded edges now. So that's the first thing we're going to do. As before, we just put it on, hold it in the center like with an iron and backwards and forwards. Once you've moved it a few times, the paper will start to stick on the block. Okay, you shouldn't need to do it for too long. If you just do it with like um, a cast iron cylinder head, take a little bit longer because it's aluminium onto the wet and dry, it's taking off a little bit more quickly. So really, you can see it start appearing on the paper, the aluminium oxide, so it's, it's coming off quite well. So I think really that's, that's time to have a look. Right, we've only really done this for about a minute and a half, two minutes maximum. I mean, we could go back on there again, but you can see it start to sharpen up the edge. We might just do it a little bit longer but you do get a lot of imperfections in here, little where people leave it apart, or maybe this is a, a second-hand part at some stage, and it's been with a load of bits at an auto jumble. You never know, because these are now like 50s. This one, they're like say early 60s, long time ago. But yeah, you know, you're just checking for cracks as well. Make sure when you put your studs back in, there's no cracks, and your threads are good as well. But just going to give it one more little go on there. Try and use all your paper, the outside bit as well. You can use a bit of pressure of hand on top of it, just, just make sure we keep it flat though. As you can see, it, it's a lot better than what it was in the first place. It just sharpens the edge up. It's nice and flat for the gasket. It won't move about so easily. Yeah, with the rocker box, I'm only wiping it around because I've literally only taken this down to replace these gaskets. And the oil in the in the rocker box is it's all good oil. So all I'm really doing is just mopping around. If I was doing an overhaul on this and it was in for a rebuild, strip that ride out, I'd actually take the spindles out, rockers out, the whole lot. But it's just a, a gasket replacement. So we're just wiping around, but it's all nice clean oil. But we are going to change oil on the bike as well once we put it back together. So now what we're going to do also. I'll show you here. When we removed the rocker box from the, um, the engine, these top studs were touching the frame. Now these are longer than standard because on this, on this bike I've got um, SRM conversion rocker box covers. They're their own ones because the original ones on here, they weren't very good condition. So I've upgraded it to the SRM uh, covers. They're slightly thicker. So they've got longer studs. So we're going to take these two studs out. That way we can get it back on, past the frame, back onto the top of the engine. Because that was a little bit of a fiddle. We put those back on afterwards. We've taken one stud out already, but just going to show you on this one. We're going to take this one out and show you. Don't use a pair of swan necks or a pair of pliers. A lot of people they grab hold the thread and they just give it a wind around. It flattens the threads off. It gouges it. Doesn't do any good. So what we do because they're extended nuts, I needed another nut. So wind down, look through your bits and pieces, find yourself the nut, the right thread, right, right down to the bottom. Then make sure you put your nut on so it's the hexagon against the hexagon. 
and lock the two together. It shouldn't be over tight. And just use your bottom spanner just to wind it out. Just break the seal, wind it out. Before you get it right out, just unlock the two together to put your spanner back on. And now do it by hand. Then you can just part your two nuts. Mm -hmm.